So that's uh, just a simple translation using a fairly simple format. But what we can move on and take a look at is how we could add some value to our tables as we are trying to create them. So down here we've got another example that we can just quickly work through where we take some city parks data. Let's take a look at it. It's very simplistic data. The NEDA is not going to be too happy about you putting this kind of data into their database because the only <laughs> attributes you've got a name and, a, and an alternate name. So right. neither of those makes for a very good primary key or no. an index or any of that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is uh, they, what they want us to make the table look more like is something along the lines of this with a primary index, uh, give them decent names, add a bit of value by calculating the area of the parks, this sort of thing. So in this case we're actually going to be using a post just writer. So just to show how simple it is, we can turn on our post just writer. So you're having one workspace write to Oracle and PostGIS at the at same time. At the same time, time. yeah. Wow. So, and what's more, I can link that same PostGIS pa password through to my user password yeah. so that they don't even have to... Uh, ah, so you can make the password the same. Wow. Exactly. Wow. This is shameless use of databases, really. It is, actually. Because really, who would have the same password on all their databases? But you never know about that. Probably me. Yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Makes life easier. Yeah. So the first thing I want to do is create a primary index. So somehow or other, I need to count these features as they come in. And one of the, the beauties and the powers of FME is the transformation tool. So one of the tools that we've got is a counter tool. And so I can add a counter in here and set it to create for me that primary index field. How about if I want to do something crazy like create a GUID? Do, would we be able to oh, do that? Creating GUIDs, that's just as easy as creating primary indexes. We've got a UUID generator oh there. Okay. So in fact, yes, we could have done that kind of uh, thing to get. If we wanted to. Yeah, yeah. rather more complicated. Sure. But now we want to calculate park area. So can you guess what we might have that would use? Well, I would, would probably use? type area. That's a good start. Oh. Look at that. We could be building so our areas. So, I mean, so basically, if I type what I'm looking for, FME tries to help me. It does. You know, and I could have even just typed cal calculate and see what came up. And you'll see we got a different sort of list. But How in come there, some of them have that down arrow? What's that about? Well, you know that better than me. That's our new and fancy. Oh, FME store. store. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, so that's another webinar, but anyway. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what those are special transformers that people have built for things that are missing, they feel are missing from the product. And so they've put a little bunch of useful transformers together into a custom transformer. And those are available from our central download sites. Yeah, so if you clicked on them, they would just right in Workbench, they would come, come down. Exactly. Yeah. So here we've added another transformer to calculate our park area. And then finally, we need to do some renaming here. And so I'm going to use an attribute copier to copy my original name of that attribute through to this new name that we want in the database. And anyone that's working with databases will be making fairly extensive use of that attribute copier or attribute renamer transformer because often your source doesn't match your destination, right? Right. They, your table will have some kind of fixed schema, and you need to be able to take those um, attributes that are coming in from your source and uh, rename them to whatever it is that your destination needs. Yeah. And of course, the other problem with PostGIS, although it's not necessarily a problem, is that they work fairly exclusively in lowercase attribute names. Mm. And so often, if your data is coming from shape where it's uppercase, you'll have to make use of something like that. Um, the other great thing about the PostGIS writer is we can do primary indexing. So we can put uh, primary yep. keys onto fields. That re capability is also available in SQL Server. Yep. So not all the databases do that, but uh, PostGIS is one of them that does. Okay. The other thing that we can do with the PostGIS uh, writer is that we can do a bulk copy insert. So that's something that makes the load Much work faster. really fast, yeah. is that yeah. you can put that uh, bulk copy on there. And so that also is being added to, to the, the SQL other. Server in 2013. That's and right. I tell people it's a thousand times faster. I know. But, but I think it's only 600 times. Exactly. Yeah. So again, we can run our little workspace and uh, then we can go and check that it's actually created it in um, PostGIS for us. So I have a PG admin running here. Now, why is it taking so long this time? It was working much better before. So I have, uh, again, if those. If you're working with your database tool looks like, I have my little schema here, which I can refresh. And by the time I've refreshed it with any luck, that uh, oh, table will be written. There goes post out. It'll open up our tables. And there's my city park table with its, uh, whoops, we need to refresh it. 
with its columns. And again, one of these is a geometry column, as you would expect, because we wrote out geometry. Yeah. We'd use the postgres writer, we wouldn't have got that geometry. Right. Yeah. Right. 